In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, when God, Amen. In fact, Wayne asked me to tell you, in brief, uh, about the relationship between Christians and Muslims in Egypt. The relationship between the Muslims and Christians is varied, and to the degree that it is varied, it has a strong impact on Christian community and its development. It must be noted that Egypt was a Christian country since St. Mark, the evangelists and the apostles, who brought the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ to Egypt in 62 AD. Egypt had been more than, uh, had, uh, more than 30 million Copts when the Arabs invaded Egypt in the 7th century. The Arabs invaded under the saying that of bringing peace to the Copts, as uh, this was their land. When the Arabs arrived in Egypt, the Romans fled. Meanwhile, Copts had nothing with which to protect themselves or their land. Most of the Coptic men became slaves, and their women became servants. After a period of time, the Islamic prince imposed special taxes on Christians called Gizya. The Copts paid those taxes even when they held high position or were uh, landowners. The burden of these taxes was very heavy, and Christians had to resort to one of three choices. Pay the high taxes, become the Muslim, or be killed. Many Christians were killed and some converted to Islam. The result of this was that Christians became poor because generation after generation had to pay these special taxes, which forced them to sell all their properties to maintain their Christianity. As example, we can mention here a few things to clarify to you what happened in the 10th century when the Muslim ruler forced Copts' mothers to stop talking in Coptic tongues and sent his spies around their houses. The result was thousands of Coptic mothers' tongues had been cut so that they use Arabic language by force instead of the Coptic language. Also, Copts forced to wear dark clothes which after a few decades, they take, take it away, but clerical men refused to do so because they were intended to show their Christianity among Muslims. My friends, I'm proud, I'm proud of my robe that shows my belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the ways that evangelized the Muslims in our country. As the political situation between the Muslims and the Coptic community did deteriorated, so did the economic situation of the Copts too. An example of opposite extreme is what happened a few years ago when the, last, uh, the former president released Muslim terrorists from prisons who then began to hunt down Copts. The situation became very intimidating and because many terrorists forced Copts to pay the Jezia taxes for fundamental Muslim group, this had a bad impact on their economic and commercial situation. Islamic terrorists burned Copts alive in front of their families, burned their shops and slaughtered them in broad daylight. All that had severe impact on poverty and homelessness. Many Copts emigrated to the poor areas in, of Cairo after having enjoyed wealth and power in Upper and Lower Egypt. Although the situation is different now, there remains much to be discussed. 
The evil thoughts about the Copts that filled Muslims' minds during the last two decades still have an impact on the economic situation of Copts. There are other things that affect the economic situation of Copts in an indirect way. For example, there is no informational benefit to Egyptian Christians on television or in radio except for broadcasts on Christmas Eve and Easter. While Islamic programs, on the other hand, are numerous and daily. There is no one in whom Christians can confide or to help them find jobs. Many Muslims, business owners, when look for to hire someone, state explicitly that Christians are forbidden, making the situation even worse. Furthermore, Christians have no permission granted to build new churches or even to repair or restore parts are falling down. On the other hand, when it comes to Muslims, anyone can turn one of his house room into a mosque where people can gather and talk as they wish. Christians were until recently viewed as the keepers of knowledge and wisdom. They were university professors and scientists of the state. However, during the last few decades, a storm of, a challenge, of a challenges faced those Christians so that a large majority immigrated and now there is only few university professors left who are Christian. The university's Muslim professors who are uh, the present majority try to stop excellent Christian students from following a university career. This is particularly clear in the faculties of medicine, engineering, and other important faculties. Currently, there is no authority that can prevent this bias against Christians. Therefore, the future of Coptic children, their income as adults, and their position in community will be heavily affected as a result of all what I mentioned and other things. The Christians in Egypt are becoming poorer, thus affecting their Christianity too, because they force it by condition to convert to Islam, to find a job or place to sleep or any other needs in their lives. As Christians, we try hard to find the proper solution to our problems, and sometimes we manipulate the bad circumstances, and most other time we find a solution through our Christian love to other people. But the problem that we are presenting here is the relationship between the Muslims and the Christians affects the economic and social situation of the Christians and its individual. And now, what are we going to do about it? Pray for us, and God bless you. Thank you.